Joan. What is this? You ask all the division chiefs to file updates on their top cases. Yes, but that's my self-destructive streak. You've got to protect me from that. You have the send-off party for Mr. Vaughn on Thursday. Right. And there's a Mr. Ross coming to see you. Reschedule. You can't. Michael, this is Mr. Clifford Ross, the governor's chief of oh, staff. Oh, hey, come on in. Is this a bad time? No, 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 come on in. You're saving me from Mount Kilimanjaro over there. <laughs> I wanted to offer my congratulations. Yeah, thank you. And the governor's. I see you've uh, personalized the office a little. Yes, the AG vetoed the Nerf basketball, but it's beginning to feel like home. <laughs> Governor's looking forward to meeting you. I'd be honored, as soon as things settle down. Michael. Cliff, yeah. saw so you come in. We still on for next week? You bet. Huh. Don't play squash with this guy. You play? No, actually, I avoid the full contact stuff. Mr. Ross brings regards from Albany. Our office had a great working relationship with Bill Vaughn. We're looking forward to that continuing. Me too. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, actually, one minute more for some... Uh, Old business? I'll leave you to it. I just stopped by to say my report is in there somewhere. I will find it. Tuesday. Okay. Tuesday. Old business. Ah, leftover from Vaughn. Uh, I've uh, taken the liberty of preparing a letter. All you have to do is sign. Hmm. You've written a letter in my name? Your boss was going to do it himself uh, right before he went into the hospital. This is about Gibraltar HMO, right? Ah, uh, about four months back. The governor was about to award Gibraltar health care contract for state employees, all 750,000 of them. It was tricky for him because Gibraltar's CEO is Martin Pierce, who was a good friend. I can see how that would be tricky. We checked every plan. Gibraltar came out on top. But right before the deal was done, we heard that they were being investigated here. So we asked Vaughn, was the investigation real or routine? Because if everything wasn't hunky-dory with Gibraltar, the governor wouldn't go near it, friend or not. And, uh, fortunately, Vaughn gave Gibraltar a clean bill of health. No pun intended. <laughs> he said there's no reason not to award the contract. And you wanted Vaughn to confirm it in writing? No, no, not us. Committee chairman of the legislature. Some state of affairs this country's gotten itself into, huh? Got to get a letter saying people are not under investigation. But you wrote this, not Vaughn. It's pretty much word for word what Vaughn said to me. Hmm. Well, I'd be happy to take a look at it. I think Bill already did that. Placing it right here on top. Joan has my number. I'm gonna get you down to that court. Teach you how to play. What do you think of him? Hayes. Does he understand what makes this office go? Did he look stupid to you? I'm sure he realizes he's the acting U.S. attorney. One slip, he's gone. seven cases in the Gibraltar Health investigation. We lined them up and we thought they showed a pattern. It's a 30-year-old man with pancreatic cancer, bricklayer with three kids. Here's a kidney failure. This is a woman with a brain tumor. What about him? They all claim Gibraltar refused to authorize diagnostic tests which could have caught their disease before it became fatal. Why did Gibraltar refuse the tests? Why else? They were too expensive. This sounds civil to me. We were kicking around a fraud conspiracy charge when Vaughn pulled the plug. Why did he do that? Thought I wasn't getting anywhere. Pulled the plug on you. I was heading up the team. Tell me about fraud conspiracy. 
Okay. Say a patient goes to see a Gibraltar doctor showing symptoms A, B, and C. Okay. Chances are 90% it's the flu, but the other 10% could be something serious. So, the doctor wants to order tests to rule out the stuff that can kill you, but first, he has to call somebody at Gibraltar called a screener. A screener? It's a non-medic who feeds symptoms into the computer, and guess what the computer says? Too expensive. The doctor's told forget it, the test isn't medically justified. Oh, and by the way, don't share your crazy, paranoid fears with your patient. What happens if the doctor insists on the test? He's fired. He's fired. And, you know, if a few people die, even if a few lawsuits have to be settled, so what? From a cost-benefit standpoint, Gibraltar is still way ahead. Welcome to healthcare in the 90s. Why is it that Vaughn was feeling like you weren't getting anywhere? Of the seven cases, we contacted four of the victims' families that had already taken the settlement offered by Gibraltar, refused to cooperate. A little hush money goes a long way. Yeah. All I know is the more I looked at Gibraltar, the more I yearned for Marcus Welby. My doctor actually trained Welby. House calls and all, but then again, that was Brooklyn. I live in Brooklyn. You live in Brooklyn? Heights. Ah. Let me guess. Renovated brownstone, mahogany newel post in the foyer. Stripped of myself. I hear the governor and the Gibraltar CEO are really tight. Like that. Are you going to sign Ross's letter? Put together a team. Check out the other three victims. And I write my own letters. Drzinski, Paul. Rick Lair. No longer a candidate. His estate, meeting Mrs. Drzinski, took a settlement two weeks ago and isn't talking. Okay, let's subpoena her and compel her to testify. If we do this, we need a live victim. The only way we have a chance at this case is putting a human being in pain on the stand and demonstrating what Gibraltar did. What else do we have? Brain tumor. Antonia De Carlo. Good news is she's alive and stable. The bad news is she doesn't know what year it is. Who else? Kevin Hernandez, nine years old, living in Yonkers. Leukemia. A test could have prevented this? His doctor, Claire Solomon, is on record there. She sent us several letters. We interviewed her before the plug was pulled. She said that Gibraltar refused the bone marrow test that she asked for. If she'd caught it sooner, at the very least, the boy could have been looking at years to live instead of months. How much did they say by skipping the test? Fifteen hundred dollars. Nine-year-old kid. Gibraltar maintains that Dr. Solomon never requested the tests. They threw accusations back and forth. Upshot is she's not practicing medicine anymore. Her license was revoked? No, still licensed. How does the boy look? How do you mean? Well, the worse he looks, the better for our case. The jury can't feel his pain, they have to see it. So if he's got tubes coming out of him, hooked up to machines, that's the best chance we have of nailing these bastards. I don't know how he looks, I didn't meet him. If the doctor made a request to a screener, there should be a record of it, right? Makes sense, but there isn't. Okay, let's find the record. Better yet, let's find the screener. Let's put Eddie on that. Yonkers. Mr. Hayes? Hey, Kevin. This is Mr. Hayes. Hey, buddy. What do we have here? Hey. Demon Squad. Yeah. Yeah, you know about the shortcut in Demon Squad to the castle? Fourth level? Under the stairs? How do you know that? I know a couple of cool things. Kevin, you remember Dr. Solomon? The lady who looked at you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can ask him. He knows. You remember what she told you? At first, I was just sick. And they didn't know why. She wanted me to take a test so we could find out. But the hospital wouldn't pay for it. Hey, you're right. It is under the stairs. Suppose I were to ask you to tell that story to a bunch of adults. How would you feel about that? Sure. When? Soon. Maybe a couple of weeks. Good. Because I don't know when I'm going to die.
looks pretty healthy. Yeah. Maybe too healthy. Maybe we should check out Mrs. DiCarlo. No. No. We go with this kid. We go with Kevin. Dr. Solomon? Michael Hayes. I told your office we could probably do this over the phone. May I come in? Please excuse the mess. I'm grading midterm papers. My husband, Henry. Hi. How do you do? Can I get you a thing? Coffee? No, I think I'm fine. You sure? I blend the beans from three countries. Coffee's a big deal with us. Bring on all three countries. Dr. Solomon, the U.S. Attorney's Office is opening the investigation on Gibraltar again. You people. On again, off again. Only this time, we are going for the indictment once I corroborate your story. Kevin Hernandez needed those tests. And I want you to tell the grand jury that. Just like that, huh? Do you know how your people from the U.S. Attorney's Office messed up my life? Claire lost her career. My wife was a good doctor, Mr. Hayes. Thank you. By the time Pierce's people got through with her, even the coroner's office wouldn't take her. I don't think my wife wants any part of your investigation. Not a second time. But that's up to her. I gotta go. Team will be waiting. Tear him up. He um, coaches the chess team at the junior high school. Neat. When Gibraltar learned I was testifying and came after me, Henry was the only reason I didn't fall apart. I know how scary it can be dealing with an outfit like Gibraltar. No, you don't. You have no idea. I teach now. Uh, it's not what I wanted to do with my life, but it's something. It's a good thing. I don't want to lose what's left. I believe I can prevent that. Your people made the same promises the last time. Dr. Solomon, Kevin Hernandez has agreed to testify. He wants to know what you're going to do. How is he? I'm not a doctor. <sighs> These people ruined my life. Will you stick it out this time? You have my word. Talk to me, ladies. How do we get him? Uh, there's mail fraud, wire fraud, obstruction of justice. Try them all. Let's see what sticks. There's a Mr. Morris on two. Says he represents Gibraltar Health. I thought you said Blaine Wilkes represented them. Yeah, Tom Wilkes is the attorney. Isn't Morris a PR guy? Don Morris. Yes. Donald Morris, Senator Redfield and the stripper, the vital vitamin scare. All Morris, all lies could make Mother Teresa look dirty. I don't talk to him. What else do we have? Hey, what can I get you? I uh, like one of those milkshake kind of things. Ice blended mocha? Vente? Absolutely. Is Jamie an oldie working today? Ugh. Jamie works every day. I'm Jamie. This is my place. Oh, sorry. Your neighbor said you worked here, but I'd... Edward Diaz, investigator, U.S. Attorney's Office. How you doing? Good. 325. For cold coffee? Yeah, pretty amazing, isn't it? So now you see why I got to arrest you, right? <laughs> uh, you were a screener for Gibraltar. A few months before you left, you handled the case of Kevin Hernandez, a nine-year-old boy. Oh, see, I never handled cases. I, um, I answered phones and I punched computer keys. Here's your change. 175. Uh, do you remember the Hernandez case? Nope. Dr. Claire Solomon requested some tests for him? There was a very thorough investigation. There's no record of that request. There was no record or she didn't make the request? 
Both. Look, I gotta go check the inventory. You know what? I just read an article about these places. Franchise fee is what? $200,000? Woo! That's a lot of money for a screener making 34 grand, huh? So I can be more help. Your table's ready, Mr. Hayes. That seat taken? Well, I am waiting for friends. I just need a couple of minutes. I'm Donald Morris. Oh, Donald Morris, working for Gibraltar. Tobacco companies give you some time off, Don. You're calling Claire Solomon as a witness. How's Imelda? That shoe thing's still a problem? <laughs> Claire Solomon is a bad doctor, and she is a bad human being. Were her hands shaking when you met? This is what she has for breakfast. Only hers comes with an amphetamine chaser. You know, there's got to be some kind of public service award for the wonderful work you do, Don. Well, I'm proud to serve a company that provides superior health care to millions of people and isn't afraid to defend itself against malicious accusations. You write that? I'm not asking you to like me. I'm not even asking you to shut down your investigation. I'm just giving you a heads up. If you don't take her off your witness list, I'm afraid you're going to be very embarrassed. You know what embarrasses me, Don? Sitting here at this table with a shameless flack like you. Know this, Mr. Hayes. If I walk away from this table without some sort of understanding, I'm going straight to the media. Then by all means, stay put. Don Morris, two in the room, huh? That moron just tried to do me. One for my friend, please. Lindsay tells me you're resuscitating a dead investigation. Do you mind if I ask why? Well, there are about a dozen unanswered questions relating to Gibraltar patient death. Stop me when I say something that moves you. No, I mean why as in, why don't you like the corner office anymore? Don't you like looking at Brooklyn from your desk? I like the corner office just fine, John. Can we set aside hierarchy here for just a minute? Set it aside. If it were me, I wouldn't have touched this. Even if you thought Vaughn pulling the plug was wrong? It would have been Vaughn's mistake, not mine. But it's not yours, John. Michael, if you alienate Albany one day and Washington the next, our little U.S. Attorney's office is going to be a very lonely place. And eventually, we are just going to drift out to sea. Now, we need them, all right? We need Washington and we need Albany in order to do our work. I'll take that into consideration, Mr. for the two of them, please. John, you are the best division chief in the building, but I do not need anybody looking out for me, okay? Gibraltar says that there is no record whatsoever of Dr. Solomon's repeated requests for the bone marrow tests or for six appeals of their denials. Sanitizing their files is obstruction of justice. They wouldn't do that. Yeah, well, it's her word against theirs. I'll take hers. I only wish she hadn't been fired for incompetence. Says who? Her confidential personnel file. Even more interesting, I didn't ask to see the file. It arrived in an unmarked envelope this morning. Mars firing a warning shot. Do we believe it? Could just be their standard operating procedure for dealing with whistleblowers. I hear doubt in your voice. 27 years old, no money, and suddenly a coffee mogul. Jamie Arnoldi's franchise fee came from an unsecured bank loan from the New Horizon Bank, which incidentally handles Gibraltar's pension fund. You talked to the loan officer? He said she looked like a good risk. Plus, those uh, coffee franchises are cash cows. He couldn't lose. Now, I ran it by my bank manager, who says it's unusual, but nothing to throw up a red flag. But no way to prove they did Gibraltar a favor. It's just one of six major banks they deal with. The deal smells funny, but there's no trace of the dead fish. You are a colorful guy, Eddie. It's a dull office. I do my best. You see page six? Dope deal and doc plots payback. Morris is earning his money. It says Dr. Solomon was fired for selling prescriptions to pillheads. Suspected or caught? Suspected. Had she been caught, there would have been proof. An accusation like that doesn't need proof. This is for the grand jury to glimpse on their way to the courthouse. Actually, it's for Claire Solomon to wonder what's coming next. Dr. Solomon, 
You want me to autograph that article in the Post it for you? It's a totally unproven allegation. It's a complete lie. Well, good. Well, then we're fine. My principal doesn't share your confidence. He's placed me on leave. Let me give meet. him a call. Oh, really? What if they really find something? Who calls them? You have something to hide. Just tell me about it. What do you want to know? If I beat small animals when I lost no, my virginity? No, but if it's going to end up in the Post tomorrow, I want to know about it. When I was an intern working 36 hour shifts, there was a lot of pressure and I started drinking. I mean, really drinking. Okay, but no patient was ever put in jeopardy, right? Never. I took a six month leave and got some help. You did the right thing. Will it matter? You mean, will they find out about it? Yes, they're gonna find out about it, but we will ride this out and we will be fine. Yeah. Lindsay, I have won cases with witnesses who shot smack in the courthouse bathroom. I can live with a recovering alcoholic. Michael, I could care less whether she's an alcoholic. I care about whether we can trust her. I think we can. I think we can. Eddie's doing a check. What do you got? I take this last night. I think you better look at okay, it. Okay, good. Dr. Solomon took good bedside manner very seriously. No fewer than three ex-patients told our reporters that the prescription this doc dispensed was sex. Jim Marienthal met the married medic while he was having his broken ankle cast. Turn it off. Michael, innuendo and rumor are one thing. Getting a live, law-abiding citizen to lie on national television is another. Not to Morris. Sir, we contacted Mr. Marienthal, who said to prove he's telling the truth, he's going to take a lie detector test on the Jerry Springer Understandable. show. Understandable. Jerry has the finest technicians in the business. Michael, maybe we should consider finding another way into this thing. You believe that? We cave over this? I don't know. But like everybody else, I'm going to be watching Jerry Springer. Her credibility is shot! Mr. Solomon, is your wife home? No. I'm supposed to meet her to discuss her testimony. Well, we've been dealing with some personal stuff here. I'm moving out. Mr. Solomon, the reports on the television have been created by Gibraltar. They're not true. Well, I asked Claire. It turns out that one of them is true. Where is she now? That's all you people care about, isn't it? Making sure she testifies. Mr. Solomon, where is she, please? I don't know where she is. She didn't want to be here while I packed. How long did she leave? It's been a while. I've been waiting to say goodbye, but she hasn't come back. Eddie, listen, we got to find Claire Solomon. You work too late. Oh, if I did not, I'd have to have a life. I've asked Joan to get you out of the closet you call an office. I know. Thank you. And she said you refused. You cannot refuse the U.S. attorney. Yeah, well. You know, when you get a better office, people start dropping by wanting to chat. Yes. How was Jerry Springer? Wasn't one of his best. Michael, we're not going to get another shot at these guys. Maybe we should wait until a stronger case comes along. Lindsay, wait a minute. We knew they were going to throw mud, right? Michael, we didn't know that they were going to dig it up. Okay. All right. The U.S. attorney comes to you and asks you to testify against an ex-lawyer for criminal behavior, so the first thing you do is whip out your five-year AA chip and then make a list of all the men you've ever slept with. Now, come on. Would you do that? You know what, Michael? You don't have a choice here. If you want to win against these people later, you have to bail now. We can't go forward with Claire Solomon. You know that. I'm going home. Just gonna stay on the hall. You no, no, no. I, I'm sorry about this. I, uh, it's okay. <clears throat> I'm working on this case, and uh, there's a kid in it. And uh, you know what? I, I, uh, I asked you to give him my cell number. No, 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 no. I don't want him interrupting a meeting with some senator just so he could ask you, you know, who'd win a war between right. the Incredible Hulk and right. Spawn. We discussed it, and it's, it turned out to be Spawn. 
Come on in. Some tea or something? Uh. Big Daddy here? He stayed the night. <laughs> but actually, he didn't really like, you know, stay the night, stay the night. He stayed till two in the morning. Or anyway, that's when I realized that he was gone. That's really stupid, huh? Yeah, uh, well, that happens sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know, that's, that's what I tell myself, you know. It helps to take the part of me that still loves him and um, throw it away. Do you, do you want to get something to eat in the kitchen? No, I think I'm going to, uh... <laughs> <laughs> now he doesn't want to be a catcher. He wants to be a first baseman. Right. Since the infield where the action is. Right about that. Mm. When are you going to have one of your own, huh? One second. Uh, one second. I'm sorry about this. <clears throat> Hayes. I found her. The star witness. Hi. Hi. I saw Henry. I called. He's gone. You're in an affair with a patient. Yeah, um, it was six years after he was my patient, but I don't think Henry appreciated that I hadn't violated any canons of medical ethics. And you're drinking? It's going well. I've been sober 11 years. Last week. Cheers. I'm going to take you home. Come on. I'm going to take you home. Let's go. You're dumping me, aren't you? We're rethinking the case. Just tell me. Yeah. Oh. That's beautiful. They take years from that little boy's life and cover it up. They ruin mine and you. You just walk away. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't risk it. Come on. Let me take you home. Come on. I'll take a cab. Fine. We can still subpoena the families that settled with Gibraltar. I mean, those were civil actions. This is criminal. They all signed statements absolving Gibraltar of any wrongdoing. If we put them on the stand and they say the opposite... They will be perceived as liars and mercenaries, and juries hate liars and mercenaries. So then we subpoena Jamie Arnaldi, the screener. And five minutes after we do, the Gibraltar lawyer will be telling her to take the fifth. So we give her immunity. She's gonna lie. You know, if she doesn't lie, she's gonna lose her business. No, I need leverage. You're late. What? For what? The party for Mr. Vaughn. Oh, Mr. Vaughn, going to Florida tomorrow. If I get there early, perhaps I can convince him to take his old job back. And then he came over and it was, it was amazing. I believe I smell Cuba. Ah, uh, Michael Hayes, my vaunted successor. Michael, someone in particular that I wanted you to know. Martin Pierce. Gibraltar Health. What a surprise. Martin knows that you've reopened the investigation. I approve. These allegations need to be put to rest once and for all. Ah, uh, no business. Those rules. Thanks. Uh, Bill tells me you're a fisherman. That's right. I've been trying to convince your old boss here to do some marlin fishing. Marty docks his boat about two minutes from our place in Longboat Key. That's great. Excuse me. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. great. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you how you're settling into the job. I have spies who give me updates. Not lost on me, sir. So this is designed to show me Martin Pierce and his native waters, how connected he is? <laughs> Michael, Michael, now, Michael. Now, this is about backing me off my investigation, isn't it? I know you, so I know that that wouldn't work. So you're braver than I was. And that's why I wanted you for this job. Not Manning, not somebody else. You. Why, then? The purpose is for you to know, to know what you're up against, for your sake. Always know, Michael. Mr. Hayes, you have a call? Okay. 
Kevin Hernandez has taken a turn for the worse. He's on the way to the hospital. Mr. Hayes, if anything happens, it'd be a tragedy. To be sure. William! Santa Unción y por su bondadosa misericordia te ayuda el Señor con la gracia del Espíritu Santo para que libre de tus pecados te conceda la salvación y te conforte en tu enfermedad. God's time, not ours. But there are men who are responsible. Isn't that right, Mr. Hayes? That's right. That's correct. Dr. Solomon knows what they did. She'll speak for Kevin. Mr. Hayes, when you see her, please tell her we appreciate everything she did. Okay. You guys hang in there. And tell her, please, now the, that Kevin is gone, I'll be going back to work. We will be able to pay her back. She loaned you money? When the HMO wouldn't give Kevin the test he needed, she said we should go somewhere else. We wanted to, but these tests were very expensive. We couldn't afford them. Dr. Solomon paid for them, and then paid for the specialists. Three thousand dollars. There's nothing to corroborate anything she said. We don't have a prayer, Michael, you know that. Downside of being Irish, you're champion lost causes. This coffee stinks. Are we done? I can't drink this. Jamie Arnold. Jamie, 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 Jamie. You know who I am, Jamie? My name is Michael Hayes, and I am with the U.S. Attorney's Office. I already spoke with that other man. You spoke to my investigator. And you know what the difference is? Mm -hmm. The difference is I am the U.S. Attorney. Now, my investigator tells me that you think <laughs> Dr. Solomon is lying. That's right. Ah, uh -huh. you're lying, Jamie. And I'm here to tell you that what I'm about to do to you is nothing personal. What the hell is that supposed to mean? Nothing personal. You know, like you and Dr. Solomon, your boss asked you to delete those files, and you did it, right? What do you want, huh? What I want is for you to testify against your former employer, but you won't because of everything that you have to lose, and I probably will not be able to prove perjury. I am not lying. Yeah, you are. Thank you. 
So what is it that I have to do to get the truth out of you? What is it? I can't buy you off. You've been bought off. I can't go on a talk show to try and salvage you, Dr. Solomon's life. So what is it that I can do? Wait. I've got it. I can bring the weight of six federal agencies down on you. I didn't do anything. Yeah, you did. I can have the IRS, the FBI, the SEC, Treasury, the health inspectors come down on your head. And you know, Jamie, there is an agency for every letter in the alphabet. I'd like a latte to go. I know about Kevin. His mother called me. May I come in? How are you? You mean, am I drinking? We can start there. If it's any business of yours. No, you're right. No, I'm not. The day after you saw me, I went to a meeting. I've been going every day since. Let me ask you a question. Are you up for this? For what? I want to put you in front of the grand jury and have you testify. <laughs> I thought you said I was a terrible witness. <laughs> I've had better. You want me to testify, knowing everything. Everything. Everything you've ever tried to hide, everything that you're ashamed of, because they will find it. They'll dig it up. They'll pull it out. They'll make it public record. You mean it could get worse? Yeah. It'll probably get worse. But let me tell you what concerns me. What will become of us if we don't try? You see, because if they can do this to somebody like you, if they can do this to somebody who's done everything right. You're it. You're my whole case. You're my witness. Do we go forward or not? Do these symptoms always indicate acute lymphocytic leukemia? No, actually, it's relatively rare. If this disease is diagnosed early, what are the chances of survival? About 70%. 70%. And if it goes undiagnosed? There's about a 15% chance the patient will die within the first few years. So in your opinion, Kevin Hernandez had a 15% chance of dying if he went undiagnosed? Yes. You order tests? Yes, a full panel. How did you do that? I called the screener. She said the computer indicated that no tests were warranted. But you were with the boy. You were aware of his condition. His face was very pale. There, were, uh, there was visible swelling in his joints. This screener, Jamie Arnaldi, has testified that you requested to test not once, but four times. Is that correct? Yes. What did you do then? Then I called Mr. Pierce's office myself. What did he say to you? Stop calling. It was at that point that you ordered and paid for these tests at a non-Gibraltar facility, correct? Yes. $3,000 out of your own pocket because you knew these tests were critical? Yes. Dr. Solomon, in your opinion, if Kevin Hernandez had had these tests six months earlier when they had been originally requested, what would his prognosis have been? That's a question only God can answer. But I know we could have prolonged his life. And sometimes, with aggressive treatment, the survival rate increases dramatically. Let me put it to you another way. Would he be alive today? Oh, yes. Thank you. You're going to come down and thank me every time I do my job, Cliff? You saved us some serious embarrassment. We'd have signed that contract with Gibraltar. 
I mean, Pierce gets a six-count indictment? Hmm. I guess you never know about people, huh? Guess you never do. Anyway, gotta get back to work. Uh, one business item. Yeah. The governor's been asked to put together a panel for a judicial system seminar. Uh -huh. He'd love you to be on the dais with him. A seminar? Next month, in Aruba. That's an island. I don't know if you've ever been on one of these things, but they're all five-star hotels. They schedule all the meetings in the morning. You golf? Uh, no. Sit on the beach, guy. I burn. Me too. Thanks for stopping by. So wait a minute. What does it mean? Well, what it means is Pierce pled guilty to obstruction of justice and is guaranteed three to five in a federal penitentiary. So, we won. We won. I'm gonna let you get back to your papers. They've, uh, given me notice. You wanna fight it? <laughs> I've done enough fighting for one year. Any chance of you and Henry getting back together? Well, we've been through the part where he stands by me through thick and thin. I don't think Henry's coming back. I'm sorry to hear that. Take care. Claire? What you did mattered. I'm sleeping just fine. See you.